Okay, how are we doing? So uh, let's let's write this down here. I, I said I wouldn't give it to you, but I lied. Okay, so we'll put it up here again. F of t, the formula we developed, you guys developed yesterday was f of t equals p times um, one plus r over n to the power of n t. And I hope you can still actually maybe even look at any particular piece of that equation and understand why it came, where it came from, right? Like r over n, what was that about? Do you remember where, what the story was behind the r over n? This it, it is, and the reason, remember, was we were saying, like, okay, when a bank says 6% interest annually, they actually mean, like, they're compounding monthly, say. They actually mean, like, uh, that amount divided by 12. No, you remember, like, that discussion? So that does that make sense why the R over N is there, hopefully. And then why the NT? Do you remember why that came out? Like, if, so if you're doing over the course of three years or something, how would you calculate how many months that is if we're doing monthly? And how would you do that? Well, of course, wouldn't three years, wouldn't that be 36 months? So somehow this, this machinery takes care of that, right? The NT is, is kind of the conversion from years to months, or whatever it is. If it's four times a year, then we'll multiply by four, whatever it is. So I hope you see why the presence of each piece is still there, just from our discussion yesterday. With that in mind, I'm gonna, if someone's about to tell us the answer to Number one, what is P, what is R, what is T? The only thing that they don't give you here is N, right? So you still have an N in the formula, if you will. Uh, but Josiah, did you? No, I said F of N equals one over N. Kind of like that. Did you say F of N? I like that. OK, equals, sorry. I just got so excited about that, I didn't listen to you after that. <laughs> one times. Just to the power of what? T? NT? Well, it actually tells you what T is here, too, doesn't it? What's? Yeah, everything's one here. One, one, one. One dollar, one year, so it's just. NT. Just N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. And 100% interest, I, I think maybe some people have been struggle with this. Are you good with the one there? Is that R is, R is one there? Yeah, by 100% interest. Did you know that 100% is one? Did you know that? So, so if, if you're if you're like if you're 100%, if that's what your if that's what your name was, if you're if you're 100%, you can walk into a party with the name tag 100%, or you can walk into that party with the name tag one. And everyone would know who you are. Okay, those are the same thing. Okay. What? Do you agree? 100%. That's the one. Those those are two two ways to say the same. thing. Is that what you got? You feeling good about that? If you haven't started yet, actually start filling out that table then. Actually tell me, how much money would he have if he invested, just what it says here, one dollar, one year, 100% interest. If N happened to be one for the first one. Now I'll do the first one for you. If N is one, I think you get two. You're welcome, the rest you can do. Okay. You might need a calculator. Oh, because you guys came in. Yeah, you'll need a calculator. Someone at your table will need a calculator. And you'll have to figure out how many minutes or in a year or whatever.
you fill out the table, you're done? So plug in, plug in various n values here. Plug in one for n, two, four, twelve, fifty-two, whatever. I told you the first one is two, right? If you plug in one, did you get two? And um, wait, what is this future value mean after the year, right? Yeah, after the one year. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Bia, do you want to give me the list? Go down the list here. What's the entry for this semi annually? 2.25. Okay. Are you guys agreeing with these, by the way? What was the next one? 2 point what? 2.69. I'll back away in a second here. And then. Uh, and and we'll just write that I guess, but um, but you could give more decimal places I guess, and we could mm -hmm. we could see that maybe no. they're, are they a little different? Mm -hmm. They are, but because it's money, you only get two. I guess we're doing that, so I guess we'll let, let it slide. Okay. Um, so uh, and what? How many minutes are there in a year? Um, uh, uh, have you not? Have you never heard this song from Red, the musical? No. What? Yeah, what is it? Five hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred minutes. If you know this song, then you probably, you, you, without any calculations, you might know it, right? What? I don't like Brenda. 525,600 yeah. minutes. You know. How do oh, you measure you measure a year? Have you ever heard this song? Yeah. 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 You can look it up. Huh? What? I sang it in choir. Like, never understood it. Like, I'm singing a number, 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 number. Well, so, so, hopefully you just did the calculation and now you do understand. All right, but it's a great, it's a great song. It's a good, good little show tune there. All right, uh, so great. Answer the questions down below with your group if you haven't already done so. Um, I'm interested to know, for instance, on number three, uh, will is Ron right? Will he be will he be getting hundred dollars at the end of the year? Maybe maybe maybe, maybe we should have just done every second. Maybe we just didn't go far enough. <laughs> like yeah, milliseconds. Yeah, we need to go to milliseconds. Let's try it. I'll do it. So answer those questions. They describe what's happening in the table on two. See if you can come up with some like precise mathematical language to describe in number two, like what feels like it's happening here. Seconds to come up with some answers there. I'm just, number four, I'll, I'll cover of that, but two and three, make sure you come up with some answers to two and three, please. What is it that's happening here? Describe in mathematical, precise mathematical language. And, the, and by the way, the way you measure here is in love, in case you're wondering. If you, you don't have to listen to the song. You don't. Sorry. Turns out. Yeah. 
All right, how would you describe what's happening to the value of the account? Uh, David K, use your words. It's increasing, but smaller and smaller increasing. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Daniela, say it your way. Um, uh, it, it, it's sick. Oh, okay. oh, go ahead, go ahead, Isaac. <laughs> it is increasing as the frequency of compounding increases. Okay. And you say your way, too. What did you say on number two? I'm just curious to hear a couple voices. How did you say it? Oh, okay. Well, what's happening to the money, though? The actual money that oh, you're getting? It's increasing. It's increasing. It's increasing. Johnny? What? What'd you say on number two? Oh, um, I said that it's increasing still, but the increase gets smaller and smaller each time until, like, when it gets to hourly and every minute, like, it doesn't even increase a cent or something slowly. Yeah, so I, I like this idea of increasing and increasing more slowly each time, kind of. Um, this is a very interesting idea. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you think it'll ever, like, maybe we just haven't gone far enough. Do you think it'll ever go above three dollars? No. Yes, yeah, so it'll have to be super like tight. Maybe just you have to go far, far enough? Yeah, we just have to like... Do you think it'll go, let's answer the next question. Do you think it'll go to 100? No. But it will go to 3? Yeah, we it's up to Will it go to 5? I think it's amazing. You would have to like... This is all I'm saying. This is an in interesting kind of increase. Like the bank would, like in this context, no, because the bank would not go that far to go into. I don't. I, this is not the bank. We're now doing a thought experiment, right? Like milliseconds. Do you think it would hit three? Some of you did it, maybe. Maybe you did do milliseconds. I know. What's a millisecond? What do you think is happening? Can we even clarify even more than what people have said? I agree. It's increasing and it's doing so more slowly. But we might want to say one more thing too. What do you see, David? Well, I was going to say, I guess it could technically. You think it would get above three? Yeah, because, like, just do it uh, an amount of time. Okay. Maybe? Yeah, maybe there's, there's, it feels like there's some kind of some asymptotic behavior here, doesn't it? I uh, like the word, the word you're using. I don't know if it's three or not. It actually, it feels like it's maybe not three. It actually feels like. It feels like it's maybe 2.72 approximately, right? Like it doesn't feel like it's actually going to ever go off the dial on that, right? Like as we go further and further, if you round the two decimal places, I think 2.72 is where it will stick. Now out further, you'll get more precision than the decimals, but it, it, we are actually approaching a single number right now, right? That's that's the thing you should be feeling. Asymptotic. Yeah, it's like it's this asymptotic idea, this limit idea, this end behavior idea. Um, is an interesting idea, right, as we let n get large toward infinity. Are you ready for a life-changing moment? No, I'm not emotionally All right. prepared. You're not emotionally prepared. You're, are you emotionally prepared to meet a new number? Okay. So, um, so this, this number is called, a, yeah, that's right, it's called Euler's number. Um, and that's how you pronounce that. Leonard Euler was a Swiss mathematician, or I guess we should say Leonard Euler. Uh, but Euler is how you say that last name. It's not Euler. Um, Euler, and um, this is a very special number, very much like pi or something like that. And it equals, it's approximately equal to 2.7. All right. 1828128248459045. That's all I know. Okay. But it's important, like pi, and so you might, you might have a couple digits memorized. Um, Anyway, it's an important number. I'll just say that right now. And it's coming up right now. It seems to be uncovered today for the first time ever. And you actually discovered the one definition of this number E. It's, uh, can I, I, th I think I can use this notation. I'll, I think you'll know what I mean. It's the limit of this expression that we've just been doing, 1 plus 1 over n to the n as n gets large. Like that's, that's a good definition for this number E, actually. 
It's not the only definition. There's some other nice definitions as well. Um, this is this is important enough. Um, this is beautiful. And I, this idea is beautiful enough. And we actually we actually have that painted in the hallway above the lockers. E, the definition of E, um, down the hall here. Have you noticed that there are equations above the lockers on that side, over yeah. the far side of the hallway? We got like the funnel up here, calculus. So we've got the quadratic formula down there somewhere, and, and this is up there too. E is such an important constant that we said it deserves to be on the wall. Wait, can you write it on the board? You can't see it. There. No. Yes. No, because I don't know if it's an M or what it's an M. Can you just read it to us? Yeah. Let me see. Oh, it's like this. Is that better? Oh, okay. All right. It's like this, right? Yeah, we can go graph it here in a minute. Okay, so um good. So this is a new number, E. Uh Leonard Euler, by the way, I don't know if you've heard of this mathematician before, but you should. He is the most prolific mathematician that has ever lived. Um, and I would say he's a mathematician that has the most number of equations, formulas, and theorems named after him. He like wrote 80 books or something like ridiculous like that. And he was blind for the last uh, 20 or 30 years of his life. I can't remember the numbers, but um, he is he is the man. He's the one responsible. He's the one that's responsible for bringing you the f of x notation that you yeah, use every day in math. He's intelligent. Yeah. Uh, he's the one, I don't know, we haven't yet discussed imaginary numbers, but when we get to imaginary numbers, he's the one that first thought about, uh, well, like, first used the letter I to represent the imaginary unit, so we'll get there eventually. Uh, Euler's like the man, so I just wanted to like bring that history moment in, okay? There you go. Now that we have E in our life, we can do some things with it. Like draft it, draft E to the X. Oh, and I should say one other thing. I feel bad that this is like your first encounter with E and you don't have very much else to go on. You're like, okay, I'll take the word and shape that this is an important number. But like, right now I'm not completely seeing it. I'm seeing it. Are you? Yeah. So I encourage you someday to take a calculus class. Um, someday you'll take calculus. And you'll realize that E has like some incredibly huge, significant, important things, uh, a role to play in, in calculus when it comes to rates of change and things like that. And to prove it, I, uh, I, will, I will get a book out here. I want to show you something. Actually, I have two of them here. All right, so take, just, just to, I don't want you to be like scared of the thing I'm going to show you, okay? But I just wanted to like prove to you that E is important, but we can't like, we can't yet fully tell you all the story about E because it's deep enough that you need to like take some more math classes. But I will say, I'll pass these around. These are books, um, this is a course you would take maybe after calculus. It's called Differential Equations. Um, and if you open one of these books, let's do it. We'll do, we'll do it right now. If you open one of these books, to any given page, I guarantee that you'll find at least one mention of E on, on the page. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, yeah, it's like, where's Waldo? Right? Any page, you open this, and E will be, E is like king of differential equations in calculus. So pass these books around and play that game. Just open to one random page and see if you find the letter E somewhere. And by letter, the letter E, I mean this E, right? Notice, by the way, I should also say, have you ever, you may have never, you may have never thought about this. We almost never use E in an equation. Like, solve for E, right? It's because, like, pi is reserved. Like, anytime someone says E, that's not a variable. In my mind, that's the number, 2.71828, etc. It's like, so. Open it up see if you find it. No, but it may you, you gotta try my game here. Hey, on Pi Day, are we gonna have like who knows the digits of Pi? Well, I, uh, I will not have. We do have a Pi Day. That's in March. Epic, huge Pi Day puzzle hunt, which is like a puzzle scavenger hunt, and like we have hundreds of students do it. Um, in March. Yeah. All right, hey guys, so can we graph you the X, please? Uh, by the way, if you need approximations of E on your calculator, just like there's a pi button on your calculator, there's actually an E button on your calculator. Now, E's role in our lives, well, you'll see eventually here, we're always like, we're often raising, hey guys, we're often raising E to powers. That's like its role in life is to be an exponential, an exponential base for exponentiation. So since we're often doing that, you'll notice if, if there's anyone found the E button on your calculator, it kind of comes along with the to the. Did you see that? It's like an E to the button. Because it's so often true that we're like raising E to various powers. 
uh, for again for reasons you might not fully appreciate yet. Right here. So if you do e to the first power, what will you get? Will you get what I had on the last slide? Do you get 2.718? Do you get the first yeah. 10 decimal places of the number? Okay. So that, that's good for approximating these values. Um, there's only one nice value on this curve that you can get without a calculator, really, and that's zero. What's e to the zero? One. And then if you plug one in, e to the first, we just found, did you do any calculator? It should be e, right? e to the first is 2.71828, etc. And then plug in two. So we have like a nice algebraic approach. So thinking about what E is, we've talked about this context of banking. Now we're just here in the abstract. Like, let's just think about, can we now use this number in whatever way we like? Absolutely, it's just a number. So we get some other points on this too. If you get four points, it asks you on there to come and come up with a little table of values. If you get four points, that'll be plenty. If you want to get more, that's fine. But Do you have a picture like that kind of, right? When you're ready, then you fill out your list of characteristics too, for both e to the x and also 2 to the x. We want to compare this with something we know that we've already done before. How are we doing on the graph and the, the, um, the characteristics list? Let's go over them. Here we go. Are you ready? I don't want to rush you here. Did you get the characteristics yet? Use correct notation and list them out. I'll give you another minute, maybe. And then if you're ready, if you're, if you're, if you're, feel free to go on the back, too, right?
it didn't have a boot. It wasn't the first round. Nice job, Dave. It was. 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 Going, that's fine, but let me let's get these up here at least. Uh, Edwin, give us the give us the domain. Listen, listen, guys. <coughs> okay, and uh, Paulina, what about the range? Yeah, strictly greater than zero. We could write this way, right? The asymptote, uh, Kevin. What's the asymptote? Yes, y equals zero. Yeah, which is a horizontal line. I know that's sometimes still confusing for people. Why is it the x-axis? Why is it y equals zero? I don't know. I just think about it. What makes sense, and then I do the opposite, Mr. Chase. Now, why does it make sense? I mean, why is y equals zero the equation of a horizontal line to the x-axis? Why that? Why does that make sense, actually, John? Because it can never be that. Uh, well, that's not the question I was asking. The question is like, why is y equals zero a horizontal line and not a vertical? Like, it seems like y equals zero should be the equation of the, the y-axis. Have you heard people say that, or maybe like you say that yourself? All points where y equals zero, which is yeah, it's, this, all it's this describes the set of all points in the plane with that property, right? Yeah. That y equals zero. Isn't that true about all those points? So I just want to make sure at all times you're not like, well, I just do whatever is the opposite of what makes sense. No, no. Let's make sure that that never is our explanation in that. Uh, Michael, uh, what's the x-intercept? Or is there or x-intercept? Uh, sure. yeah, okay. then, then what? Is there one at all? And the answer is no. You want to give me the y-intercept, though? Oh, so it's zero, two. What does it say? Zero what? Two. Zero, two? No, one. Sorry, sorry. Zero, one. Uh, and then is it increasing or decreasing? Really? Oh, Mark. Increasing. Yeah, increasing, right? And you could say increasing on the interval negative infinity to infinity or something. And then, uh, Jordan, what's the domain for 2 to the x? And the range? Asymptote? X intercept? Y intercept? And incre increasing, decreasing? Increasing. Those answers sound familiar, right? Don't they? Copy, paste, right? So 
So let's, I just, yes, did you notice that yet? Okay. Hopefully, hopefully you recognize that obviously if the graphs look the way they do, that you know, the answers are going to be similar. Also, just from the algebra, algebra here, remember E is not a mystery necessarily. It's just a number. It's 2.7 to the x, isn't it, what we're graphing here? So it makes sense that it would look something like 2 to the x. It's just it's very, very similar. It's just a number, 2.7 to the x. Um, I don't want to go through the back page at all really too much, except to say, what does E to the negative x look like just from a qualitative standpoint? How does that? Why? Yeah, why does it look get down? Why is it going downhill like this? Again, I'll just roughly draw it here. Why? Why do we know that's going to be what it is? Just before we ever look at, we just look at the equation. How do we know? Andres. Okay, e is almost the same as two. How do we know that two to the negative x looks the way it does? Ball mm -hmm. in your course test to you. Why do we know that two to the negative x goes downhill? Yeah, Danielle. Yeah. Yeah, this is like 2.718 down, downstairs here to the x, isn't it? Yeah. Is it clear that that's like less than 1? It's de de decreasing, or we might call it exponential decay, right? Good. So I just want to remind you of that. I don't have anything else to say about this. If you want to work on the back, that'd be great. I have one more resource for you that I'd like to draw your attention to. See if we can do a problem or two on that. attention to this. Um, yesterday, let me write the formula up here again. Yesterday and also at the beginning of today too, we were considering this formula, right? P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. Thanks, Isaac. Okay. And this was our formula for, like, we developed it ourselves. And this worked for any N value that we choose where we were, like, using com different compound periods, like N is 12, if we're doing months, like, all that. Do you remember that? Okay, yes. Of course you do. We just did. If we're in the situation where we want to compound continuously, that is like the limiting case. We want to do it every second. No. Every tenth of a second. No. Every millisecond. We want to do it all the time. Then you have this equation. And I'm, we're just going to like tell you that as n gets large, this equation becomes this equation with the e in it. And it, it's for reasons we just kind of talked about a little bit, right? So like we have this thing approaching e as n gets large. So that's the, that's the deal. So is that on the top of your worksheet? Should be. P, E to the RT. Now keep in mind, I, I'm telling you that, that this is what happens in the limit as n gets large. If you, if you decide to compound continuously, which is what it says down here in this example that we're about to look at. So by com So continuously means all the time, like in the scenario where we're doing it every second. No, no, wait, every millisecond, right? It's like all, all the time. Yeah, RT is the power. R times T so is the power. Okay. All right, so uh, so here, this is this continuous thing oh, right here. And this one, we're using this formula in particular, N is, in 
particular, n is, what's it say? 12. Yeah, n will be 12, right? So you can plug that in. The p, the r, and the t are all given here, and they're all the same, aren't they? If we're both formulas. This, the p in this formula and the p in that formula are the same. The r and the r are the same, etc. So if you can fill in the blanks, then actually analyze, if you will, which one would be better, which one would give you money, more money. Do a calculation to support your reasoning. And um, before you do the calculation, maybe make a guess as to which one's better. Do you already have a feeling for which one you choose? Maybe yeah, you do after some more discussion today. But actually confirm it, actually see what the difference is. Number your group got for each of those. Have you done it? I, 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 you know, I see you guys all working hard out there. Did you, did you do the calculation? What's P in both formulas? No. P. P. Yeah, thousand dollars. What's uh, R in both formulas? R is point point zero two. Yeah, point zero two. And T in both formulas is what's E? Oh yeah, it's a number, it doesn't ever change. Keep in mind in these formulas that um, that you know all letters are not equal. E, it's not like E will ever take on a different value. It will always be this number we just introduced today. And again, it's on your calculator. Hopefully you are using that button. Have you figured out where it is? Yeah. Okay, good. So which account should Juan choose? Account two. Account two? Did you do the two calculations? What do you get for the first one? No, 1,281.4. Okay, and then what do you get for account two? Which one is more? That's the thing I want to know. Account one is a little more? I think account one is a little more, but how much? Like two cents. So this is not like a light decision that one should really get like, like keep him up at night. But if, if he had the option, I'd probably go for the more money, right? Uh, especially as your account grows even larger, that might be two dollars instead of two cents. So finish that for homework. Have a great weekend. I love you all. Eat a healthy lunch. Make good choices.
Yeah, for both. Yeah, in both situations, he's getting 2% interest, 10 years, he's got $1,000 to spend. In the same situation, the only, only difference is whether you're doing continuous or monthly. Right. What? 